Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I'm going to take you through step by step how we can connect the cloud based data warehouse Snowflake to the mapping software QGIS. That's a really handy feature that's going to let us plot data that we have stored in Snowflake in our QGIS map. And it also means that whenever our data updates in Snowflake, then the plotted data in our QGIS map will also update. So just behind me here, I've got some really basic points and lines on my QGIS map, and that is coming from data that I have stored in Snowflake. So we're going to go through step by step how to get to this point. And there's basically three things that we have to get right. The first one is the naming convention of, of our Snowflake tables. They have to be set up and named in a specific way. The next one is our connection setup. We're going to be using an ODBC or Open Database Connectivity Driver on our computer to connect QGIS and Snowflake. And then lastly, we'll come to QGIS and go through the process of how we pull the data into our map. So the first place to start is Snowflake. Here I have a Snowflake web app behind me. And I mentioned before that our tables have to be named in a specific way. And that is following the OGR convention. And actually there's going to be a lot of acronyms in this video. So I'm just going to put them as a list in the description below so you can look them up. So OGR is part of the GDAL or Geospatial Data Abstraction Library and basically outlines how columns and tables should be named so that when QGIS looks for geospatial data in Snowflake, it's looking for specific tables and specific columns to guide it to the right place. So you can see on the left here, I've created this database called example DB and a schema called public. The names of those aren't important, but within the public schema, I've got a few tables here. And the first one, um, that I'm going to talk about is geometry columns. So you have to have a table called geometry underscore columns. And this table doesn't actually contain any geospatial data that we want to plot, but it will direct it will direct QGIS to the tables that have those data. So I've got a preview just below here. And um, you can see geometry column columns contains three columns. The first one is F table name. So this column is a column of table names that contain geospatial data that we want to plot in QGIS. And the next column um, is called F geometry column. And this column has the column name that contains geospatial data in our tables. So you can see here, we'd expect both table one and table two to have a column called geom, and that's going to contain our coordinates that we want to plot on our map. And um, the next column is called geometry type. So that is the type of um, geospatial data we'd be expecting. We're going to have points and lines and, and polygons and probably a few others. But in this example, I've just done some points and a line. So we use point and line string in here for that. So um, you can also see how I've created this table from my SQL up here. You can see each of the columns are variable character or varchar. So everything in this table is a string. So let's have a look at table one now. That's a table that should contain some geospatial data. So as we already expected, it has a table called geom and it contains point data. So this is how we set up our point data. We have point, open bracket, and um, longitude and latitude. That's following the WKT, or well-known text um, format. And also importantly, this is a variable character column as well. It's important to use variable character and not Snowflake's geography um, variable type, which we'd often use for geospatial data. So we have geom and we also have an ID column. That name um, isn't set. You don't have to call your ID column ID. But basically this just identifies each point with a letter, A, B, C, 
D and E. So let's have a look at table two now. We're expecting this to be line data. And you can see that we have a column called geom, and within it, we have line string and um, a set of coordinates that we want our line to follow. And so there's just one line, and it has the ID A. So that's that part. There are more columns that you can specify if you want to get a bit more advanced, but basically that is the most basic requirements of what you need in your tables to plot some data in QGIS. So the next thing to set up is our ODBC connection. We have to install an ODBC driver on our computer for Snowflake. And that's quite easy to do from the Snowflake web app actually. So if you just come up here and click help and go to download, come over here to ODBC driver and click this button to install it on your computer. Um, to download it onto your computer, sorry. And then follow the instructions after that to install it. So I've already installed it on my computer. I'll just click Done to skip that step. And so the next thing to do after you have that installed on your computer is to go to your Start menu and type ODBC. And you should see this ODBC Data Sources 64-bit. Click on that. This is the manager for our ODBC data sources. And you can see you'll probably already have a few different ODBC uh, data sources here. You probably won't have the one that says Snowflake, but that's okay, we'll set that up now. So the way we add a new ODBC source is we click Add. And after you've just installed the ODBC driver from the previous step, you should have this Snowflake DSII driver available here. So click that and click Finish. And that's going to give us this window which we can use to set up our driver. So when QGIS looks to our ODBC driver, it has all our Snowflake account details stored with it. So it can point directly to our Snowflake account. And so I'll go through each of these boxes and where you grab the information from to fill them in. So the first one is data source. That's just going to be the name of our connection. I'm going to call it Snowflake. The next one is user. And so that's just the username that we'd use to log into Snowflake. That will be blurred on my screen. And um, similarly with password, that's just a password that we use to log into our our Snowflake account. And the next one is server. And server you can actually get from the URL of the web app. So that's going to be blurred too, but I'm just going to copy everything from after https double slash all the way through to the end of dot com. So copy that and paste that in there. And um, database and schema uh, allow us to be um, allow us to specify where our geospatial data is stored. So we're going to tell QGIS to look in the example DB database and the public schema. That's where our important tables are. So example DB and public in there. Uh, the next one is the warehouse, which can be found here on the top right. So my warehouse is compute wh and my role is right next to the warehouse that's account admin. So that is all the information we need for this one. So click test. Great, that works. Success. And I'll click OK. So now we have um, complete the first two steps. We have our tables in the right naming convention and we have an ODBC driver set up to connect QGIS to Snowflake. So I'll click OK here and I'll flick back to QGIS. Now delete um, these layers and we'll re-import them in this step. 
So what we have to do here is go to Layer, then Data Source Manager, and come to this Back to Tab here. And within that, we can select Database to connect to a, a database. And then we can set up a new database in here. I already had one set up. I'll just delete that so we can do it from fresh. So our database type is an ODBC and we're going to click new for a new ODBC database connection. Just going to re-specify that type as ODBC. And then we have a few boxes that we have to fill in here. So the first one is the name. We can name this anything we want. That's just going to be the name of the connection that we can use again. I'll just whoops, call this Snowflake Connection. And the host is always going to be local host. Because it's looking for an ODBC driver that's stored on our local computer. So that's going to be local host. And the next one is database. So in database, we want to type the name of the ODBC connection that we just set up in the step before. So that was that first box we filled in. So I called that Snowflake, the capital S. And so we don't need a port. And the next step is to go to basic and just type again into these boxes our username and password that we typed into the ODBC um, driver setup. Those are our Snowflake username and passwords. We want to store those with this database connection. So we'll hit test. We can test that connection. Successful. So we can click OK and now we have this Snowflake connection available for us to use. Um, I'm just going to keep this as the default option. It's going to basically find the tables that have geospatial data. And so if I click Add, found Table 1 and Table 2. Because we had our Geometry Columns table set up correctly, and it's recognized that Table 1 contains points, and Table 2 contains a line. So we can go select all and add layers. And close this. And you can see um, we've got two layers added here. A bit tricky to see because of the background map. I'll just turn it off. But it's worked correctly. And also um, you'll see part of the name of the layers is blurred. That's because it will name your layer with your username and password. So you might want to rename that as soon as you create a new layer. Um, so that's good. That's working really well. We've set up a connection between Snowflake and QGIS. The last thing we might want to do is to con as just to check if we add some data to our Snowflake table, does it also get added to our QGIS map? So let's just quickly come back to Snowflake and Let's add a new point to table one. So I'll just copy my insert command, uh, make a table called E, uh, make a point called E, sorry. I'll just change the coordinates slightly. So I'll run that. Just check that it's gone in fine. Yep. Ah, already had one called E somehow, sorry. Let's call that um, F. That might not matter. Okay. It's, um, so we've added a new point. Let's just see if we come back to QGIS. I'm just going to zoom out. And that's triggered a refresh, and we have this other point here. So that's good. It's refreshing, uh, it's adding new data when we add new data to our Snowflake data. So I hope that's been helpful, and please don't hesitate to add a comment below if you have any more questions. Thank you for watching.